um, you should probably jump off this live and watch at least five to six different highlights uh, before listening to a live because these things can get... Well, I just wouldn't want to completely turn you off to begin with. So where do we start, you guys? It's been like an insane... I think right now the gardener outside, it's not too loud. Let me... Just let me know if the if you guys have issues with the volume because I need to put this phone down in order to function. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's start. So, so the um, what Meet the Shermans is on. You can't be diet woke to listen to the lives. You really cannot. You really cannot. I found myself just so discouraged the last couple days. I know that um, I haven't been on this for a little bit. I've, I just can't believe that this is real life. Um, so I, I had to give myself some time because how is this that you wake up daily and then you look around and this is actually what you have to deal with. And I found myself just really getting to some depressing moments because I couldn't even have fun. Like I, I, can't, I can't even sit and talk to, to people and try to have like a normal conversation with somebody without being like, how is this not obvious to you? You know, morning, it's tough to watch this stuff every day. It really is. Um, hold on, I'm getting a I'm getting a back noise. And so I'm gonna give you like a couple examples here because this is the new new and the reality that we're dealing with right now. And I probably should be drinking at this point because I'm like, what is gonna numb me from what's happening? Hold on, I'm getting, I'm getting a back noise. Okay. So I'm give you like a Jeez. Let me lower that volume on there. Okay. Um, sorry, Frankie, give me a second here. Like, this is what we're dealing with with people, you know. Go into the store, just the store, the health store. So, like, you have to sit with that for a second. Well, if there's a health store, what, what are the other stores that aren't health stores? And, like, this thing that I love and I'm obsessed with, my kids love this too, it's really healthy, right? Why with all these labels? Like, why is this the new flipping normal? Before, you used to just be able to go to the grocery, pick up something, and look for, like, the expiration date, right? Like, oh, when is this going to turn to complete toxic waste in my pantry, right? But now... We're upselling our friends with stuff like this. Like, why can't I just be like, you guys, this is delicious. Go to the store. You should get this. I have to be like, this is really good, you guys. It's organic. It's non-GMO. It's, um, there's no added fat. It's gluten-free. They don't use artificial ingredients. They, like, why? Why do I have to pick up bags at the store that I depend on? And then why am I depending on that place to begin with? to feed my family and to function because I'm a useless, like dependent on the system person who's trying her best. Like cereal for my kids. Why, why do I need now to just make sure there's not like a million poisons in this cereal? Because the other cereals that they sell have a million poisons in them. This entire feeling like the buzzkill of every conversation. You know, like I, I mean, just sitting with my, with my cousin over the weekend and they got this adorable little dog and he's just the cutest thing that they had to get from, you know, they, they couldn't find this breed in the Philippines. So they're anyway, she's just, she's just wanted this dog for forever and he's adorable and they got this dog, but guess what? The dog needs to get up to date on the vaccines before they can fly him to the Philippines. And it's not just like the rabies one. But so her dog, she's telling me this and she's she's woke to a point like she's definitely on a very healthy lifestyle. They run the like the only chain of really healthy organic 
um, restaurants in all of the Philippines. Okay. Like they, they know what they're doing when it comes to food and nutrition and, but here she is talking about her dog and how, you know, he got the parvo and he's a puppy and she wanted to space the shots. And the vet even looked at her and made her feel like a dumbass. And she was like, this vet, you know, was making me feel bad and was even calling the, the, um, I guess plan that they had that her and the breeder had like stupid and that it made no sense because there were so many vaccines she didn't want to get. And you're just like listening to this. And then she mentions that, you know, within a week, the dog is now having diarrhea and vomiting and now they have to go in in a couple days and get the rabies and then they need a second parvo and you're like why is this our reality like why why is this i mean so anyways my point being i just got to a lot of these like really stupid places mentally in the last few days because I feel like we're asking all the wrong questions, you know? Like somebody on your social media might wanna tell you about a new, I don't know, skin treatment to try. Like, hey, you should really try this. It's got four ingredients, all organic, blah, blah, blah. And you have the people that are like, but is it FDA approved? You have those people and and now, like, look, today on USA Today, right? I'm like pulling up news thinking, well, what next? USA Today posts this article. Well, sorry, they published it June 20, so five days ago. Just so you guys can see this article I'm looking at here. Because, um, you know, we're trying to drink better water. And USA Today goes high levels of arsenic in bottled water sold at Whole Foods, Target, Walmart, study says. Okay? A test found that... Bottled water brands sold at Whole Foods, Target, and, Wal and Walmart contained high levels of arsenic, um, which arsenic can obviously cause reproductive harm, cancer. Uh, there's apparently a state-recommended level of arsenic. And then you're reading this stuff going, okay, well, now what bottles... This is what, what the fear and the media and the... Mat and all. So now you're reading this going, what bottles now do I need to stay away from? Which are, And like... I got to just these really dark points where I was like, why are they poisoning the water to begin with? Why are there even levels of arsenic in our water coming out of our showers, coming out of our sinks? Why, like for the people that wanna talk filters, let's talk filters and best filter brands. And like, would you go with a Berkey? Would you go with the Kangen water filter? Like, all of the different brands and then you're literally sitting back going are we being completely with like really because why collectively as a country we can look at news like this and now go oh okay well we need to get on some better brands we need to scout and scour and find not not sitting back going who the fuck is putting lead fluoride arsenic and all this poisonous shit in our main freaking water source to begin with you know yeah like i mean a few of you were like oh my gosh i love those champagne mangoes because I, I they're so delicious right i love those champagne mangoes but they're not organic guys why does our food even have to have organic labels on them to begin with and I gotta, I gotta say this because I've mentioned it a lot with these Asian stores. Like, look, Asian marketplaces, you ask any of them, <laughs> they're cheap. It's not a racist comment, okay? It's just business. It's good business. It, mostly Asian people will go the cheapest route they can to make the biggest buck they can. This is in a lot of stuff. Whether it's a good business motto or not, I'm telling you, I'm not making a racist statement. I feel like I can say this because I'm Filipino. Asian markets will not pay the tens of thousands of dollars for the organic label just to be placed on their side. They're not going to pay it. But they'll tell you, like, we get it from this farm. And many of those farms won't pay for that organic label either. Because does organic 
freaking matter in the United States of America anyways if a company like Doritos can pay millions of dollars to slap the word organic on their bags of chips that you know are not organic. Like the corn they used was organic, but that's about it. Other than that, there's natural ingredients in there. So this is crazy town, welcome. And I don't freaking know anymore is what I'm saying. I, I understand that there's a lot of you that are like, oh, well, we, we, you know, we need your advice in this or like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Because I could literally recommend something right now that's working for me because nothing is a one size fits all that you're going to be like, well, that didn't work for me. That's one. Number two, I don't know if the company is going to within a year or two freaking sell out. I can't today. I'm trying to be motivational and I can't. I just can't. Just like there's no one size fits all diet. There's no one size fits all. Like, I am sorry too now and I really don't want to, to just, uh, whatever. You know what, at this point I'll lose like a million of you. Because there's too many people on here that are like, well, you know, I built, took so long building up a following. Like, I, who needs a following of freaking zombies to begin with? <gasps> I'm just going to say that. I'm just going to say that. Because you got a lot of people that don't want to speak on important topics because they're afraid of, like, losing people. You're losing freaking dead weight to begin with. Whew. All right. That being said, I know I have a lot of people who are vegan who follow me. And hi, hello. But you guys, there's no one size fits all. I'm sorry. I know of a lot of people who tried the vegan thing for years and years and years. And there's, why is there now freaking tens of thousands of ex-vegans who are trying to restore their health? And you're probably gonna say, well, they weren't doing it right and whatever. I'm gonna just tell you this, okay, straight up. Am I, am I even going to dive down this thing right now? Hormones are changing. Your body is changing. Like you're constantly changing. Environment plays a huge part in things. You should, if, it, if you're able to source what's local to you, local farms, local to your flipping environment. There's a reason why all of China can eat rice five times a day and not get the same bloat as you. There's a reason why I don't have a predisposition in my genetics to eating beans for every meal because beans are not good. It's not going to work for me. There's a reason why fishermen out in the sun who fish all day long that are getting all the vitamin D that they need can eat certain kinds of food that's not going to affect them the way it's going to affect the people in the freaking mountains, right, of Alaska that aren't getting... There is no one size fits all diet. There is no one size fits all flipping anything, okay? And I really, if your diet is working for you because you've been on that path and you're like, well, I've done the vegan thing and it's totally work. That is awesome and that's great that it's working for you. But even with keto, it doesn't eat. People who like are on certain diets also give themselves cheat days. Are you in crazy town? Because you get a cheat day? Okay, Latino. I know that was to me. I still feel like that's been the best, the best insult I've ever had on social media. Because <laughs> there was so much wrong with that too. But I'm sorry, you have people that are healing themselves. And why are we even sitting here healing ourselves? Like, why is there this plethora of supplements and all natural whatever that the FDA won't approve because it's actually helping people? But there is never been a time in our nation's history where we have just been freaking all the health options, right? All the health options, but the sickest the sickest generation of all. We are trying to get off this dependent cycle of all of these meds, all of this pharma, all the prescription. You know, I had a girl on just the TRS inbox who's like, hey, what are your opinions? And I got to address this later on that 
platform, but I get this asked a lot by Christians, okay? Because apparently the third eye thing with Christians, it turns them off. And I totally understand that as a Christian. And they're like, doesn't that worry you that, you know, on the website or with the company, they want to talk about the third eye or that they... Guys, if you're a Christian, do you genuinely believe that then God put you on earth completely calcified? Because at that point, that's your human body. Your body, when you came out, did you even... Because I used to say we came we come here perfect our immune systems are and then we we f it up as a society we just f it up but then again now you're getting just women who are pregnant you're finding in the umbilical cord 200 plus freaking toxins and they'll report that on the news they'll report that on the news because this is the new normal they won't be like oh well this is how you're getting all these toxins because we're poisoning your food water and your air um and there's no like sign of that stopping anytime soon but but so you have these Christians that are like, well, I feel uncomfortable taking that because it's like opening your third eye. Okay, this is your pineal gland, right? It does get calcified and blocked up. Heavy metals are not good, especially for this area. When heavy metals are removed from your system, you do get, nat naturally, you'll, you'll get clarity. You'll suddenly feel better. And it's not like this home having to go and meditate and awaken a third eye and get to like, I don't think God, right? I don't want to speak for God, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't go against the Bible and your belief to like remove toxins. And these, a lot of them are the same Christians, honestly, that like, if you're taking prescription medication, so what are you saying then as a Christian? Does it say in the Bible that you can only take medication if it was FDA approved? Because then what do you say to any Christian that's trying to heal and trying to feel better? So that's kind of, I got to word that better though, because I have to be really professional on that platform. And so I'll have to figure that out, how to word that nicely. <laughs> but it's like, that and that too okay so yoshi what you're saying right but if you mention that to a christian they're just going to be like no but i don't want to go down that path of that it's like the same christians who view yoga as like really bad for you because people get spiritual with yoga and like apparently the only way is to you know i just can't with you i just can't with you because you're the same christian that's like defending poisoning your children for the sake of the herd. So I think that that's what I'm trying to say here is lately, like the whole weekend, I've felt like um, pretty much, I want to say Jeff, I, I, I'm like Jeff Goldblum in Independence Day, Jeff Goldblum in uh, Jurassic Park, pretty much the Jeff Goldblum character. Don't you guys feel like that lately? Like you're sitting back and you're warning, 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 and then crazy happens and you're like but that but that's because i don't like why why were we why were we trying to make dinosaurs to begin with <clears throat> so you have i just don't even want to you know what I, that, that that's where i got is what i'm saying that's where i got i don't like that i have to spend any more time trying to convince people that documented poison doesn't magically become like good for you when injected and because it was FDA approved. That's not how any of this works. And I got very discouraged because of articles that were coming up. Forget just like the Hollywood thing, okay? Because these people are complete and utter shills. And I'm not now trying to get all paranoid down the conspiracy theory thing, but tell me why, like, okay, Let's talk about this whole Kristen Bell, Dax Shepard thing, which I'm just like, why are why do these two have any relevance to begin with? But two weeks ago, everybody in the movement was like applauding freaking Jessica Biel, right? The wife of Justin Timberlake. So Justin Timberlake's wife being now a part of, um, I don't know, can you even say that? Is she a part of the movement or not? Like, cause now I'm feeling like, are we being played? 
Are we completely being played by just both sides? Look at this. There's this game right now on Hulu called Spin the Wheel. It's produced by Justin Timberlake, and it's hosted by this guy. Just kind of an interesting pairing, isn't it? This is the doofus that has, like, shamed parents of vaccine injury, telling everybody that they need to um, only believe doctors, even though enough doctors have come out speaking out against this stuff. This guy is married to a woman who apparently supports medical freedoms, but is still pro-vaccine. Just, you know what, you guys, at this point, I'm just like, nobody needs to be your hero. Be your own freaking hero. Like, I just... This is Nicole's, Nicole's in this one. It's called a PSYOP. So now I'm like, well, what the hell? And then you have all the articles coming out. Okay, Huffington, how can Breitbart, right, who is more in like the alt-right, that they're, they're forced free speech, and they're, they're like always talking about how we're being censored, and what they're talking about, though, is any conservatives being censored. So Breitbart and these like Daily Wire, they're like, they're censoring conservatives online. Well, then Breitbart gets to now post up an article that the Huffington Post is deleting all of the um, anti-vax stuff, right? So Huffington Post, who's a big part of the censorship, is now, look at this, deleting anything that's Jim Carrey, Jenny McCarthy related, and other anti-vaccine posts, right? That's what HuffPost is doing. So you're going, well, but Breitbart, you've told us that any kind of censorship is wrong. Breitbart, you've told us that we shouldn't flipping censor anybody. But how come then on this article, you're completely agreeing and okay with any article between 2006 to 2011 being deleted because it was a hotbed of anti-vaccine conspiracies, you know, um... And now it's okay to censor. So what the flip, man? Like, so so some things now are okay to censor, but Breitbart, I thought that you told us that even like, even hate speech shouldn't be censored. It's all a flipping mess. And it's all just to divide us so that we can sit back and research stuff that they're probably providing to us to begin with. Because why do we have to sit here and research freaking water filters? Why? Why can't we just be like collectively as a country, hey, do you mind maybe not poisoning the water? Just a thought. Do you mind maybe not selling out and giving all of the water and the ownership on that to a company like, oh, Nestle? And then not making it illegal. Like, why is it illegal in so many states to collect rainwater from the sky? That you're poisoning too. Why do we even have to research EMF blockers? How about just stop killing us? You know? Yeah, because nobody wants to think about it and go through it. And I'm sorry, this, this live is just a little depressing because you have to get to the... First, you got to like get to the reality of our food is banned in what? Nicole had a post earlier, like 30 different countries, 30 some odd countries ban the food that's on our shelves because it's not food. Yet we're here twiddling our thumbs, fighting with each other. Yeah, well, you can't go with go with that kind of a mushroom, not that kind of mushroom, right? Go with that kind of, but not this one. But look. Why even why is all I'm saying. You know, that's why it's so easy. Once you, once you awaken to the fact that they are systematically poisoning you and once you awaken to the fact that like, first of all, when you get past the polio talk, because <laughs> that's where people are like, oh, yeah, I don't really like the vaccine thing, but it did save us from polio. And then when you find out that it didn't save us from polio, that polio was man-made because we were spraying people with DDT. And since we're no longer spraying people intentionally with DDT, we suddenly don't have polio issues. And then they've renamed it things like AFM, GBS. It's all the same damn thing. So once you realize that, then you could say, 
well, wait, why are they doing all of this to us to begin with? Oh, and once you ask that question, welcome. Welcome to, when people say, welcome to the rabbit hole, it's because they're like, welcome. Now everything, everything will be easier to understand, yet still as devastating to have to take in. Okay? Right? You can't build a home for yourself, but you've been through 17 years of schooling. I love that. You literally just... So now it's about... Do I live in the matrix awake to all this and just try to skate on by or exit completely knowing that life will just never be the same and the world is heading down this really dark path to begin with and I all the more understand Jesus comes soon. I just all the more I'm understanding that because I can't right now deal with you know the churches around here and the local churches have flipping flu shot clinics at churches at churches i just what is happening and now you have people that are like, oh, but what do you think then if we have green vaccines? What do you think if we green our vaccines? Guys, it's all poison crap that you're not supposed to deal with. Your body's not supposed to deal with. Like, look at what's scaring everybody in our country right now. And we're going to coin this today, okay? Because we got a lot of, um, don't be, don't be a mom-by, all right? It's a zombie mom that freaking is buying into all the fear that you're being sold. Don't be a mombie. Here's what fear selling is doing in this, in this country right now, because you can simultaneously have a hep A outbreak where like two people in one county get hep A and the whole freaking, because of how the media is and you're flipping news and what you call news is reporting. You're going to go, you're going to sit back now, be at home and be afraid of hepatitis A. Yet you can, with a very, very quick duck, duck, go or Google search, find out that John Hopkins researchers will admittedly let you know that there's at least 82 people a week who die in Minnesota from medical errors, meaning a mistake, okay, by those they trusted with their health. 82 people a week in Minnesota alone are dying from improper diagnosis, getting on some kind of wrong prescription, dying, not like having a bad day, like dying. And that is not an epidemic, according to the powers that be. Over 3,000 Injuries, though, weekly, 82 deaths, 3,000 weekly injuries due to medical error, preventable deaths, preventable deaths. And why? Why is everyone freaking out over what's not even important? Because fear sells. Why do I have parents all over my inbox afraid of chicken pox? But then what do I do if I get the chicken pox? Bitch, you get the chicken pox. That's what you do is you get it and you stay at home and you get better because your immune system is like, well, this sucks this week. That's what you do because crunchy parents, why do we even have to be labeled a crunchy parent? How about just parents that don't buy into the bullshit? All right, understand that things like measles burn through vitamin A. They're, it's burning through your vitamin A. So you got to keep your kids topped off on vitamin A so that they can recover much quicker from something like the measles. The measles. Okay. <laughs> because your public health officials have completely failed you. They've failed you and they don't care about public health. If they did... Almost 20 million kids in this country would not have obesity. You've seen what they're selling at the stores. 
You've seen what they're selling at the stores, what they're selling at your drive throughs what's perfectly legal, what's perfectly okay, yet you and your kids that, are, that don't buy into the poison, you're the threat to society. You're not a threat to society, you're a threat to their pocketbooks. Parents are freaking out, freaking out. My kids are dehydrated, they got sore mouths. Like what is, what is a cure for dehydration? What's a cure for dehydration? Anybody want to chime in? I just... What's happening is parents... Back then, parents knew how to treat their children when they were sick. Now you don't. You don't know how to do it. We need a water vaccine. Our kids aren't getting enough water and there's arsenic in the water. But there's arsenic in the vaccines too. Yeah, but at least this one's going to keep them a little more hydrated than the other option. Why then? Why are you afraid of something like this when we are intentionally injecting measles into tumors? Look at what they're doing at Harvard Medical. They are intentionally injecting measles. The, the wild virus strain into tumors because 99.98% survival rate in first world nations, okay, for those who've had the measles naturally and now have immunity and they're protected against a lot of cancers for the rest of their life. But why are you afraid? Because we're using statistics of malnourished children in Ethiopia and we're comparing them to your kid in Orange County, California, because that makes sense. Because that makes sense. The measles never went away, guys. It's a cyclical disease. That means it comes and goes. Stop using the word eradicated if you don't know what the word eradicated means, okay? How many people do you know that have died from the measles, personally? How many people do you personally know that have died from the measles? Yet how many children do you personally know that are on the autism spectrum? or have a chronic illness, or have allergies, up the wazoo. This is what pisses me off about the generation we're living in today, okay? Ask anybody from your parents' generation what the biggest compliment was when they had children. What are big compliments back in the 90s and 80s? Oh, your baby is so cute. Oh, your baby is so well-behaved. Those are some great compliments. Do you know what a number one compliment is now that shouldn't be a compliment? Your baby is so alert. Why is that a compliment? I get it's hard to not like, how do you take a compliment like that? Because I hear that all the time. I've heard that a lot these past nine years of my life with my three babies. You're out in a store and a stranger wants to come up to you and tell you, Wow, your baby is so alert. That is devastating and scary, which you want to look at them and be like, dude, how many babies then are you seeing just on the daily that are not alert? That is some sad, sick shit, you guys. It's really sad. All the time we're hearing that. And it's not... It's not a compliment. That should scare us. But nobody's sitting back going, that's really not normal. Okay? We have just gotten so used to accepting that as a compliment. We forget that nobody was complimenting me as a ba us when we were children. I'm not that old. That was never a compliment. My mom never heard that once. Your babies are so alert. We're not even sitting with that as a society. Right? What's been 
calling pe pediatricians all day and not one will discuss vaccines, not one. They won't. And I've done it, I've done it on here where I've like live called local pediatricians and they won't even see your kid. I'm, I'm on one of my highlights. You guys hear the nurse. She doesn't even want to know how old my baby is. She doesn't even want to know the name of my baby. If it's a boy or a girl, the first thing she asks me on there is, do you plan on vaccinating? That's because this is the new normal now. This is crazy town. Hello. Welcome. You got your CDC saying vaccines are safe and effective. You got the Supreme Court ruling that they, and literally the legal classification is that they are unavoidably unsafe. And then you wonder why parents are going loopy. Why parents have to do the research. We don't want to do the research. Okay. We left it up. We'd happily leave it up to you guys to do, but you guys aren't doing your jobs. This is why parents have to do this. And then what are you going to do when parents want to now look this up for themselves because you've given us two very contradicting statements? You want to now shame us. You want to now make us look crazy, right? Like we just want to do this. We don't want to flipping do this. Who wants to, who wants to do, who wants to do this? I can't even enjoy a day off because I'm like, what next? So Jeff was like, how do you even start these kind of conversations with people? How do you find out who's woke, who's not? We were at a wedding the last weekend and, um, you know, the, the, the planner, one of the planners was out there and just clearly the skies were being sprayed. You guys saw on my highlights, right? Clearly that is not normal. Those are not clouds. And I just looked and she looked like a younger girl. And I just said, in front of Jeff, we're sitting there. It was during like the bride, the bride and groom were eating, so you kill time because nobody wants pictures of themselves with you know food stuffed in their faces. So I just looked at her and I said, because I was like, I wonder if she's woke. Here's an easy way to check. I just said, interesting clouds we're having today, huh? And she looks up and goes, Well, what do you mean? I'm like, What would you call that cloud? Like, remember when we were kids, we had cumulonimbus. You know, we had what, what, what's the name of that one? And she's like. I don't know, but clouds have always looked like that. I said, no, they haven't. How old are you? She's like, and then she just looked at me. She's like, well, what are you getting at? Like, that's, I'm like, watch, they're not going to look like that in five minutes. They're going to space out. And then she comes back to me like 10 minutes later. Yeah, look, those have all spaced out. It's like, bitch, you've not been looking up. You just, you've just not been looking up for like your whole life. They're not. And she said, that's just how clouds have always looked. But guess what? That's not a cloud. So then what is it? And then I was like, I was like, well, you know, just let me know how you feel later on this evening, how you're going to feel. Because we're literally standing right below it because it was an open sky. And her, me, the DJs, she came back to me like before I left that wedding going, my throat itches. I'm like, yeah, bitch. Your throat fucking itches. Because you've been breathing in some shit. And I was like, yeah. Those clouds. And that was it. What are you going to do with that? What do you do with that kind of conversation? You walk away. You walk away and go, well, I don't know, seed planted or not. It's so deep, right? It's so deep. You can't enjoy anything. with it. So what are you trying to say? That they're poisoning us? What are you trying to say? That they're not? Because. <sighs> Why are pediatricians denying the obvious? Childhood eczema, diabetes, hypertension, dyslexia, severe allergies, bedwetting, ADHD, autism, autoimmune disorders, asthma, cancer, plaguing. Plaguing our current generation of children so much so that it's so unusual to see a child who's alert. According to the US national health statistics, our children are sicker than ever. So why pediatricians are you denying the obvious? Why physicians are you denying the obvious? Sure, our compromised food supplies and external environmental, you know, ex uh, components are going to be playing their part too. But, but how do we expect to inject our children 
with 49 doses of 16 different vaccines before the age of 6 and 69 doses before the age of 13 without any type of health repercussion. How? How? In comparison to the 6 to 7 vaccines that those of us in our 30s received as children, it should be cause for concern, right? It should concern us all. No? No? Anyone? <laughs> Our children are receiving more vaccines before they're six months old than we ever received by the time we've graduated high school. Hello? Maybe that might be why all these kids are just not alert. Maybe. Just maybe. I'm not a scientist, though. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not qualified to speak on this matter. The eyes I was given, you know, the brain that I was given that's not completely calcified yet, it's just kind of trying to put some stuff together. Just trying. That's just my logic. I know, I know I'm not qualified. I know I'm not qualified, and even with there being over 200 vaccines coming in down the pipeline, all of which will be required for our children to attend your public schools, your public daycares, you know, if bills like this continue to pass. No, no, big, no big deal, no issue though. I should not even bring it up because I'm not qualified. You literally, because when you get those medical exemptions, if you can even obtain them now, you know those medical exemptions, that number, lucky number five in your county with your pediatrician's office? What is this shit? Is this like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory type of shit? You get that medical exemption from your pediatrician. It's like you got the golden ticket for the year. For the year until you got to prove it next year. You got to be a chemo patient or near dead to get a freaking medical exempt in California, right? Or near death. I'm exempt from that one. Why? Because it almost killed me. That's why. That's why I got the exempt. Because it almost killed my kids. That's why I qualified. <laughs> what? What? I just... Well, why is it happening? Oh, because we're laying down without a fight because we're, we're, we're allowing them to say it's for the greater good of society. Oh, so the greatest evils who run the place get to use terms like the greater gut and we're just all supposed to, yeah, okay. Okay, I really do sound like a crazy person right now. The, the thing is, with this is that even if I wasn't on this live, I'd probably just be sitting here talking to myself. So like I, w I, could, on I could get a medical exempt because I could just qualify as, as just crazy and unstable mentally, and that's just my exempt. I'm sitting here talking to myself. I am just talking to my myself, my swelf. It's just, it's, it's just medical fascism, you know? I can't. It's just medical fascism. No big deal. No big deal. If we wake up tomorrow and if our bodies belong to the state, we can expect, as it has been and continues to take place in many other states, right? West Virginia, Mississippi, the police. East to show up at our doorsteps, ready to take our kids into custody if they're not up to date on their poison list. And we can get fined. You know, we'll, we may end up being fined for these children's uh, absences and threatened with imprisonment because we're suddenly endangering our children. The same society that has allowed 80% of our food to be fake food, zombie food, not real to consume, and not good enough for a lot of these labels that you gotta pay for extra. Like if you wanted to come up with an organic product tomorrow, it's gonna cost you so much to even start and even do good luck. All you were trying to do was help people out. And they're gonna make it so difficult for you. You gotta pay a lot of money to prove that what you're trying to put on the shelf will not poison like the other stuff that's allowed on the shelves. 
Oh, oh my god, oh my god. Oh. oh my gosh. And for what? They're getting rid of what true herd immunity is. Do you understand that? We used to have true herd immunity. It was when your kid got sick and you'd have a chicken pox party or a measles party. Like our neighbor had the measles, our neighbor had the chicken pox and my parents were like, you guys have a play date coming up, go, you know? And that was like true herd immunity. And now they're getting rid of true herd immunity and you're seeing 20 year olds, 30 year olds getting shingles because the, <laughs> cause it was laying dormant in our system and it was relying on, on, on being around children that are now exposed to this stuff for it to like and then and then we did this we did this to ourselves okay and you still have these people that are chanting out but vaccines saved us this is not vaccines saved us Kristen Bell really this isn't according to any published peer-reviewed research in over two centuries worth okay <laughs> vaccines in every instance came onto the scene way too late to take any credit for saving anybody, including things like polio. The diseases were then and are still to this day cyclical. You shouldn't even call them diseases. They should just illnesses. We don't even know how and when those cycles last and how long because prior to the development of these vaccines, the disease was already on the decline by over 90%. <laughs> over 90%. Why? Why is this even the new normal? There's not a lot you need to know about this, guys. Even if you're pro the vaccine, there's not a lot you need to know about this to just start taking it seriously and looking into it. S skip for the fact that like they're not liable. You're promoting and pushing a product where the manufacturer is not liable. And the doctor that's prescribing it is not liable. I'm just, I know, it's like I'm talking, mean, this is not so town. It's not so town. I mean, holy crap. You have people that are legitimately walking around that are afraid of the measles, but they are not afraid of all the adverse reactions of the measles. Okay, so you're afraid of the measles, first of all, but you're going to inject this that has a side effect of, of the measles. So let, that's just one, okay? Uh, cardiovascular sy symptom, system vasculitis is, a, is also a side effect. The endocrine system can get disrupted completely. Diabetes, uh, your digestive system, um, diarrhea, vomiting, parotitis, nausea. Um, you can completely ruin your child for their life. But that's not scary to you but that's not scary. A lot of these things are not reversible. Do you guys know how long of an ad this would be on television if they had to advertise it in that way? This is just psycho, psycho town. Everyone's allergic. Everyone's shocked when you tell them your kids have no allergies. They're shocked when you tell them your kids only get sick like once or twice a year. I'm, I'm just, just, it's madness. Because are our children even ours? Is this how I have to end this again? You guys know we looked into that sovereign citizen thing. And I know that there's a lot of lawyers that um, that deal with that. There's something about like that magical age of seven that if your kid is over seven, you can't buy them back from the government anymore. <clears throat> I was sent this um, 
and I'm going to read off what she, because she actually like worded it perfectly for me. And um, I will save it to the stories, but I don't quite know. She's, her account's private, so I don't want to, I don't want to out her. But she listed the, the talk on the sovereign citizen thing perfectly so that you guys can understand why and how they can continue to do this to your kids. Because to the government, they're not your kids. Your kids are their kids. So this is why they can continue to do this and why they can't go after children like in the Amish communities um, because those kids, they don't have birth certificates. They don't belong to the government. If the government comes in and seizes your child and then they try to run your child through the system and find out that your kid doesn't have a social security number, they don't have a birth certificate, they have to give that kid back because they don't own that child. You guys realize this, right? So just one more thing. Um, but here's just a little bit into the history on this, just so you guys can like take this all in. Okay, it's some verbiage showing that as long as we're citizens of the state, the state will be your parent, not the parent. You are just a legal guardian to a child that belongs to the state. You yourself belong to the state. The state is the parent of the citizen. One such objection resulted in the landmark 1905 Supreme Court case, Jacobson versus Massachusetts. Write this down if you're taking notes, okay? 1905 Supreme Court case, Jacobson versus Massachusetts. 15, which serves as the basis for current vaccination policy. In Jacobson, the Supreme Court upheld an 1809 Massachusetts smallpox vaccination law supporting compulsory vaccination practice in the United States through police power of the states to protect the peace, health, and welfare of its citizens. The police power serves to protect the community of its citizens. So this is back up to 1809, over 200 years ago, and there were anti-vaccination movements. There were always people that were against the vaccines and against the state coming in and doing this. Okay, we forget that it's not that long ago in our history that parents fought and many of them died over the fact, the crazy concept that their children are gonna now have to be in state care eight hours a day, that the state gets to raise them and school them. Right now, it's so abnormal to hear that somebody's homeschooling their kids, like that's weird. Back then, it was weird to leave your child in the hands of the state for half the day. It's not that long ago in our history. It's just that our elders are being poisoned and their memories are fading, okay? If there's a design to this. So um, the police power serves to protect the community of its citizens as to avoid a tragedy of the commons wherein acting in one's self-interest causes harm to others. For example, an individual may choose not to be immunized, then contract and spread disease, increasing harm and potentially death to the more vulnerable community members. This is how they sold it to them back in the 1800s. So state requirements for children to receive educational instruction is rooted in its common law doctrine of parents petriae, in which the state is considered a parent to its citizens, especially the vulnerable. This happened in the 1905 Supreme Court case. Okay, did you hear that correctly? The state is considered the parent to the citizens, especially the vulnerable. This is the only reason I'm bringing this up now is not to get you further depressed, but just to let you know why they can get away with what they're getting away with, because it is it is another level of psychotic and to come to grips with it, you have to understand this country's history and why they continue to do things like this. As educational institutions became a central location for children to gather and potentially spread disease, states began to require vaccination for school attendance. This is how it all started. Most courts and mandates are puppeteered by the fact that United States had to file bankruptcy in 1933. The birth certificate came into play prior to the United States becoming incorporated. We use to record births biblically, biblically, okay? The laws are based on the fact that the United States bankrupt of the United States bankruptcy laws. Long ago, trading goods from countries 
and counties out of jurisdiction was difficult due to the fact that if you trade a boat full of shipment, so say spoons to another country, things like um, the United States for the shipment, they had these watchers. And if the person who did the deal took the shipment, but never returned their part, which was the watches to keep to the other country. Now we had this break. I know some of this stuff sounds really confusing, but just bear with me. Maritime laws were now created to solve this problem of jurisdiction issue, okay, in order to keep people honest. So look up these maritime laws. Laws here since bankruptcy are maritime created laws, and the maritime law is based out of the city of London, because that is who the United States gave ownership of its people and land in order to repay all this debt. All of our courts in the United States are maritime courts. The laws are passed as politicians continue to work for the crown. Look at your house deed when you close on it. It states the crown. <laughs> property, future property. All these incorporated citizens are to be owned and obey the creditor. So our all capital name incorporate and therefore we should pay taxes. We have just been indebted to them since 1933. This is why there are sovereign citizens. This is why there is a movement of that. I'm not telling you to go do this. There are people who are doing it, who are getting uh, ownership of their children back from the state. But that birth certificate is literally their like slave paperwork. What exactly, what was the point of leaving the British government just to become property once again? Because you had morons in charge. And we continue to allow these people to have say in, over our, our lives. And this is why they can do it and why they can continue to get away with it. Because if you want to continuously have your children raised up by the state, educated by the state, you can't be surprised when the state gets to make all of these laws that you have to abide by. Like, it shouldn't shock you, right? That's why. That is why. It is possible to do, but it takes a whole other thing. So I'm going to stop this because it's about to kick me off and then jump back on. So here we go.